In July of 2019, Mino Raiola facilitated yet another big money deal, sending Matthijs de Ligt to Juventus, all the while catching headlines, for better or worse, and furthering his status as one of the foremost super agents in football, if not THE super agent. He was ranked 5th in the world in 2018 for sports agents' commissions, that's across all sports, bringing in a staggering $62.9 million, according to Forbes. What's up? I'm Adrian from Rabona TV, and going through all of this, I actually respect Ryla a little more. Or at least, how do I say this? I respect his come up and can understand why the players are so loyal to him because he is incredibly loyal to them and puts their interests above all else. But we'll get into that in this little bio of his life and career so far, but before we do, thanks again to OneFootball for sponsoring this video. OneFootball's app can keep you up to date on all of the transfers that have happened so far this summer and rates the likelihood of those that haven't happened yet. Plus, there's live scores from all the summer friendlies, breaking news from your customizable news feed, highlights, and more. Free download if you use the link in the description for either iOS or Android. All right, let's go. I've left my sources in the description of the video if you want to do some reading yourself. Carmine Raiola, known as simply Mino Raiola, of course, was born on November 4th, 1967 in Nocera Inferiore, Italy, a relatively small town southeast of Naples. But when he was just one year old, his family moved to Harlem in the Netherlands, about a 30 minute drive from Amsterdam. His family opened a pizzeria, which they aptly called Pizzeria Napoli, in Harlem's Grot Market. Speaking to the Financial Times, Mino said that he started working in the restaurant by the time he was 11 or 12, first by helping to clean and eventually working as a server given his gift of the gap, something that clearly has carried on to his career. Later on, he took on a much bigger role with his family's business, which, by the way, had grown to 11 restaurants. As the young Ryla started branching out into other aspects, in order to be ahead of the curve, he also studied languages so that there was no room for miscommunication. Ryla studied English, French, German, Spanish, and Portuguese, adding to his mastery of Italian and Dutch already. He made his first million at the age of 19 when he bought a McDonald's in Harlem, then sold the land to a massive property developer in town to turn a quick profit. He also started a company called Intermezzo, where he provided aid to Dutch companies that wanted to establish themselves in Italy. Again, you can see how this is directly translatable to working as an agent for players who want to move to another club or country themselves, and in fact, his company Intermezzo worked to complete the transfer of Brian Roy from Ajax to Foggia in 1992, the first of his football agent-like moves. So how did he get into the football world in the first place? Well, it was always a passion of his, more so than his passion for business, and Ryla himself even played for FC Harlem in the 80s before moving on to become an executive at the club. The club has since ceased to exist, but Ryla himself says that he didn't get along with the other executives at the club as their ambitions didn't match his own. He even said that he wanted to bring a young Dennis Bergkamp to the club, but couldn't convince his peers. However, he would help Bergkamp later, as Bergkamp's agent Rob Janssen hired Ryla as an interpreter when the Dutchman was completing his move from Ajax to Inter Milan in 1993. Ryla did so well that Janssen offered him a job at his agency, but Mino of course wanted to run his own company, so he left Janssen's to start his own and began establishing himself in the football world. The first deal that Ryla facilitated that caught the attention of the football world was Pavel Nedved's move from Sparta Prague to Lazio in 1996. Ryla had contacts in the Czech Republic due to his close relationship with Czech coach Zednak Zemin. Nedved would go on to impress at Lazio for five seasons, with his work rate and dedication to training, which was only encouraged by Raiola, making him one of the best players in the Serie A and earning him a move to Juventus in 2001. It was also in 2001 that Raiola met his next big client, 20-year-old Swedish striker Zlatan Ibrahimovic, who had recently moved to Ajax from Malmo. As the story goes from Zlatan's autobiography, Zlatan showed up in his Porsche wearing a Gucci suit while Ryla was waiting for him wearing jeans and a Nike t-shirt. And his casual attire is almost a trademark now, something Ryla says gives him an advantage as it causes those he's working with or negotiating with to underestimate him. Ryla began scarfing down food, all the while presenting Ibra with stats that proved that he was lagging behind other strikers in the league, that he was behind his competition, and asked him an important question that changed his career forever. Do you want to be the best in the world, or the player who earns the most and can show off the most stuff? Mino told him to sell all of his cars and watches and to get to work and train harder than everyone else. Zlatan acquiesced, 
and the rest is history, with Ryla keeping an extremely close relationship with Zlatan throughout his career and ensuring that he put the interests of his client above those of the clubs who wanted him, to the point where he almost acts hostile towards the clubs he's dealing with. He's done the same for the likes of Paul Pogba, who was famously at the heart of a disagreement between Ryola and Sir Alex Ferguson. According to Ryola in 2012, after telling Pogba that he was underpaid, but ultimately that staying with United was the right move for him, once meetings occurred between Ferguson and Ryola, well, here's how Ryola said they went down when he spoke to the Financial Times. Ferguson, I don't talk to you if the player's not here. Ryola, get the player out of the locker room and sit him here. Pogba enters, Ferguson says to Pogba, you don't want to sign this contract? Pogba says, we're not going to sign this contract under these conditions. Ferguson turns to Ryla and says, you're a twat. Ryla says, this is an offer that my chihuahuas don't sign. Ferguson, what do you think he needs to earn? Ryla says, not that. Ferguson, once again, you're a twat. <laughs> so, Pogba didn't sign the contract, and later signed on with Juventus where he became a regular in the starting 11 and won many trophies. While Ferguson went on record a few times regarding Mino Raiola saying things such as, quote, There are one or two football agents I simply do not like, and Mino Raiola is one of them, end quote. Or again, he said, quote, I distrusted him from the moment I met him, end quote. And finally, while Ferguson was speaking at an event in front of rugby team Sale Sharks, Brian Mujati asked, quote, With all of the coaching and analysis, why was no one able to acknowledge the undeniable talent that is Paul Pogba? And Ferguson's answer? Ryla wasn't and still isn't afraid to ruin relationships with managers and clubs in order to protect the interests of his players. A massive reason as to why all of his clients seem to love him so much, because he treats them as if they are a member of his family. He looks out for them like a loving father who wants the best for their kid. You would think that these burned bridges with clubs and managers in some instances would be terrible for Ryla's career, but that's simply not the case, because he represents players that clubs really want. Within two seasons, Ryla brought four players to Manchester United, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Henrik Mkhitaryan, and Paul Pogba all in 2016, and then Lukaku in 2017. But it was the Paul Pogba deal in 2016 that caught the attention of FIFA officials for all of the wrong reasons. Now, if we're to believe what Football Leaks has to say regarding Pogba's transfer to Manchester United, and I mean their track record is quite good, then Mino Ryla earned 49 million euros from the transfer. That whole situation honestly deserves a video of its own. This would be a 30 minute special if I went into that though. So we'll save that for something else. But no punishment came for Raiola. He was in the clear there. Also, in May of 2019, the Italian Football Federation suspended Raiola from acting as an agent and advisor for three months, due to Raiola being accused of poaching Sassuolo player Gianluca Scamacca from his agents and FIFA followed suit with a suspension shortly after, meaning he was banned from working with his players worldwide. However, Mino contested the ban, and his appeal was accepted by the Federal Court of Appeal in Italy, and with FIFA. So, they didn't find any wrongdoing for his Pogba deal, or at least lacked evidence, or Ryla expertly stepped around the regulations, and he was cleared of any wrongdoing for the Scamacca case, meaning he was able to pull off his latest high-profile transfer this summer, Matthijs de Ligt to Juventus for an initial 75 million euros and 10.5 million in add-ons. Mino was welcomed as a hero outside of Juventus HQ. But that may not be the only big transfer of the summer as Raiola has again started up his propaganda machine in order to get the media talking about Pogba wanting to leave United, which Pogba himself helped out by saying he may want to try something new, and Raiola stated that quote, The end of this story hasn't been written yet, we're here today, I don't know about tomorrow. End quote. So whatever happens, love him or hate him, you can't question Mino Raiola's commitment to the players he looks after. He doesn't care if he upsets clubs, fans, or coaches. And while there seems to be some fishiness around a deal or two, he clearly knows his way around a deal. And you can respect the smart business moves he's made, from the pizzeria in Harlem all the way to becoming one of the most famous football agents ever. So what do you think of him? Personally, I have a little more respect for him in regard to how he got into the footballing world after building himself up in Harlem, an immigrant boy who turned himself into a massive entity. 
But hey, what do you think? If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to drop a like for me and subscribe if you're new. Other than that, I'm Adrian. I thank you for watching and I'll hopefully see you in the comments section. Later. Thank <laughs> you.